Let's pray before we begin. Lord, please let us understand your word and put it in our hearts. May it shape our lives to be more like your son. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Real quick, if you like this content, please like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. Thank you. The, Isra the Jews, Israelites, had been in the land of Babylon for years. Now even another kingdom has conquered the Babylonian kingdom. They had been in captivity. There was in captivity a Jewish man, a wonderful man, whose nickname was the Big Boss. His name was Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a cupbearer for the king. That means that he was the fellow who, who, who protected the king from poison. He would taste the food before the king ate it. He was the fellow who would per perfect the menu for the king and so forth. He had a report. A fellow named Hanani came back from Israel, uh, Judah, and he told uh, Nehemiah that he had been to the land of promise, the land of Canaan. Nehemiah had been away from the land so long, he said, how is it back home? And Hanani said, it's not very good back home. The walls of the city of Jerusalem around the city of Jerusalem have been destroyed, and the gates of the city have been burned. Nehemiah was very grieved because of the condition in which he, which he found or heard of the city of, about which he had heard concerning the city of Jerusalem. He came in one day before the king, and the king said, Nehemiah, why are you so sad? Your countenance uh, bespeaks sadness. And Nehemiah told him the story. He said, my beloved, my beloved city, Jerusalem, uh, is in bad shape. Hanani has come back. He tell, tells me that that the walls around the city have been leveled and the gates have been burned. And my heart is sad about that. The king gave, in, in, uh, in days to come, the king gave Nehemiah permission to leave and uh, receive the leave of absence, he did, to go to Jerusalem and lead in rebuilding the wall around the city and rebuilding the gates of the city. Now, as soon as Nehemiah got there, uh, Sanballat and Tobiah, and others of the enemy decided they would fight him. And may I say this, as I've said so often, folks, you'll never be, be fought with the devil until you start doing something for God. It's very interesting to me that the Chicago Tribune never writes anything bad about these uh, Satan churches. I mean, the churches that uh, worship Satan. Not a, not a big article about them. No, why? Because they're not doing anything. Uh, the, the, the church in Richardson, Texas recently, I say a church, uh, with, I'm using the word uh, with uh, quotation marks, that uh, Unitarian church that had uh, uh, a stripper uh, dance in the service, and uh, uh, she ended up with nothing on above her waist and nothing at all but a G-string. And I, I, all over America, they put pa pictures and papers. I saw it as I traveled. And most every paper, there was a picture of this uh, female uh, dancing nude from the waist up and nothing but a G-string on it all in the First Unitarian Church of Richardson, Texas. Now, by the way, I didn't see a thing bad about that church in the paper. Not one negative thing was said. They just had it there and uh, put the picture and wrote an article. Not one negative thing. They didn't say one thing about the, any, bad about the church. Why? The church not doing anything. Only a hundred folks showed up. Uh, I, I hope it'll be on television tonight. I, I said, uh, if, if they put, put on all I said, this will be on tonight. I said, there's something going on around America that you fellows don't know about. <clears throat> the cameras never turned to them. I said, the truth is, the largest churches in the history of the, of the, of the New Testament church are being built in America now. And they're fundamental, Bible-believing, soul-winning, sin-hating, Christ-honoring churches. But I said, you don't turn your cameras on them very much. You turn your cameras on new dancers down in, uh, in, uh, in Richardson, Texas. That's the dirty hippies get the cameras on them. I don't somebody turn. I said this. Somebody turn the cameras on Hiles Anderson College where the girls have decent-length skirts and the boys get haircuts. And, uh, but uh, don't do that much. Why? Because you don't do anything for God, the devil never decides to fight you. One fellow said, Brother Howes, you're always in a scrap. You're always in trouble. And uh, look, I don't stand a fight all the time. The devil never bothers me. I said, it doesn't have to bother you. You're on his side already. You pluck his tail feathers like I do, he'll hound you all the time, I'll tell you for sure. 
And uh, so Nehemiah said, I'm going to build a wall. And immediately, immediately, trouble came and the fight came. Interesting to me, the homosexual churches in Chicago the, and, and around the country, nobody ever writes any bad articles about them. No, the bad articles are reserved for churches trying to feed hung, hungry people and trying to teach decency and get people born again and get folks out of hell and turn folks to heaven and run bus routes and help the blind and help the retarded and help the poor and help the needy and uh, take others' offerings and so forth. That's the kind of church that gets in the dirty right up. Oh, it's not the liberal pussyfoot and compromising, ear tickling, back scratching, penny pinching, nickel nipping preacher that uh, that gets criticized. It's some God fearing man like Jim Vineyard that spends his life serving others and unselfishly uh, devoting his life to the Lord Jesus Christ and the cause of other people. No, it's uh, I'm trying to say as long as the devil's fighting us, brother, there's something going on around here. You mark mark it down. So Nehemiah said, "I'm going to rebuild the wall," and the enemy set out to fight. Now, what did they do? <clears throat> First thing they did, the Bible says, they laughed at him. They laughed at him. They're, they're beginning to build a wall, and here the enemies gather around and laugh. They're not worried about him yet because no bricks have been laid. They're not worried about him yet because no martyrs have been poured. They're not worried about him yet because no walls begin to rise. They just laugh, and they think that if they laugh at him, they'll discourage him. No, a real born-again, God-called, God-fearing Christian won't stop because somebody laughs at him. Not at all. They laughed at us 15 years ago <clears throat> when I came to this church. They laughed at us when we said we're going to build a fundamental soul-winning church here. And they said, you, you, you won't be able to pay for your payment. You have to sell the buildings. And uh, they laughed. They laughed when we started the, high, the uh, Hammond Baptist High School. A man came to my office, one of the leading men in this area, came to my office, and he said, Reverend, you can't start a high school. And I said, you just sit there and watch this and see. I said, why can't we? He said, you just can't. I said, why? I don't know why, but it's bound to be impossible, he said. And I mean, this fellow, if I called his name, you'd know him. He's one of the leading men in this area. And I said, we're going to start it. He said, you can't. I said, we can't. yes, we can. He said, it's impossible. I said, you just stay and see. They laughed, but I haven't Baptist High School. has been there now for five years. They laughed when we started Hyle Sanderson College. And um, and they, they said that it can't be done. <laughs> well, it's been done, brother. It's been done. Well, an official came to me from this area. I mean, a big, big official. I mean, you know, Dr. Dries Dust himself came to me from this area. And he said, a church can't start a college. It's against the law. I said, what law? He said, I don't know, but it's bound to be some law against it. And I said, just stand around and see. And people laughed and said, yeah, now then, they did all bigger biting swallow. <laughs> we may have. <clears throat> uh, but uh, but uh, they laugh, and uh, they're laughing now. They're saying, they're saying, yeah, that church says they can pay two and a half million dollars. Did you know that presidential campaigns, men running for president, many of them don't raise two and a half million dollars for their entire campaign? The mayor came over here the other night, over here, and he told me about how what a good time they had that raised, I think, four or five thousand dollars just that afternoon. I didn't tell him I've got to raise two and a half million dollars for next January the 1st. And they're laughing. And folks in this area are placing odds that we won't be able to pay off the college on January the 1st. You sit for the house, can we? I don't know. I don't see how we can, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to take those odds. <clears throat> if they'll bet me two and a half million, I'll sure take it up. <clears throat> and... Uh, <laughs> you say, how do you know? I know. Why? Because we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. I don't know how we're going to do it. I know one thing. I'm going to cry. I already have. And I'm going to cry a lot and pray a lot and worry a lot and fret a lot. No, I don't worry. I don't know. Uh, you worry. I, I'm anxious in the Lord. But uh, I'm going to worry. But you, just, you, you hang around, brother. We're going to fork over a check for $2.5 million January 1st. Yeah, we are. Why? Because we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. You say, preacher, I've been worried and scared to death. You just cuddle up close to Jesus, brother. You have nothing to worry about. The Bible says, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What does that mean, preacher? That means that no matter how much the gates of hell attack us, no, gates don't attack. Gates stand still. We attack the gates. The Lord's not saying there, it doesn't matter how much the devil attacks you, he'll not win. It means no matter how much you attack the devil, you'll win. That's what it means. The church is on the offensive here. Nobody takes the city of the, the gates of the city to, 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 to battle. 
against another country. The gates stay right where they are. Gates are defensive. And so the devil sets up his gates. And the First Baptist Church and the, and the Fairhaven Baptist Church and the other churches in the area and across this country say, we're not going to stand here. We're going to attack it. We're going to pass out tracts and win souls and knock on doors and build schools and build churches and set records. We're going to do it. And the Bible says you keep on marching in the offensive army and the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Uh, they laughed at me when I preached my first sermon uh, as a young, young lad and I preached three minutes. They laughed at me at my home church when I walked the aisle and said, I, God's called me to preach. They said, little Jackie ball never do it. They laughed at me at, North, at, at the Texas University Arlington Branch, when I went to college there my freshman year in college and told them I was going to be a preacher. And I'm the only fellow in the history of that college who ever flunked five courses in public speaking in one semester. They said they laughed at me and said, there's one thing you never could be as a preacher. They laughed at me when I went independent and said, you can't do it outside the, the convention. They laughed at me when I came north. But blessed be God, laughter from the enemy never stopped a man of God that, that's going to stay in the battle. Laughter never stopped the church of Jesus Christ. They laugh at our hair. They laugh at our dresses. They laugh at our courtesy. They laugh at our discipline. They laugh at our manners. They laugh at our soul winning. They laugh at our college. They laugh at our high school. They laugh at our grade school. They laugh at our young people. By the way, they cry about theirs. But they laugh at all we do. But blessed be God, they don't laugh at the product we turn out. They don't laugh at that. These folks that are criticizing fundamental churches... Why don't they tell? Why don't they put in the newspaper about the the blind ministry we have here? Why don't they put in the newspaper about the the ministry of the deaf? Why don't they put in the newspaper? By the way, those people that wrote that article, they walked in here. They saw this section right over here on Sunday morning filled with our retarded adults and teenagers. They saw it. They saw it. But garbage collectors never care anything about decent food. They just collect garbage. Let them tell about the people in our church who sacrificed to send little boys and girls to school. Let them tell about the other's offerings. Let them tell about that little boy in Chicago has fiction paper. Brother Vineyard gave me a copy of it. We're helping to take care of his operation and to take care of his expenses. This church, listen, this church does more for social people, the social uh, problems of our neighborhood. This church does more to help the poor. This church does more to help retarded. This church does more to help society than all the churches of ministerial alliance put together in the city of Hammond. All of them. Let them put that in the paper. I'm simply saying, but blessed be God, praise the Lord, amen, hallelujah, glory to God, and talking in tongues. Listen to me. Listen to me. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that stays on the attack. We're more than conquerors. We're unconquerable, unbeatable through him that loved us. He cannot be destroyed. We cannot. So what am I saying? I'm saying laughter never, laughter from without never destroyed the word of God. Well, they kept on building the wall. I guess they have about two layers up now around the whole city, and these enemies say, Whoa, laughing didn't work. Let's try something else. And the Bible says they despised them. They despised them. And they started criticizing and fighting them, despising. By the way, that doesn't do it either. We ought not to despise back. But, but, but uh, despising never ruined the church of Jesus Christ. I've had, in the city of Hammond, <clears throat> I mean this, I've had people spit on, spit on in my face. I mean, <laughs> spit in my face on public streets in the city of Hammond. I've had people stop me on the streets and curse me out. I've had people meet me on the street and tell me they were going to get me. I've had threatening letters and threatening phone calls. I've been called everything under the sun. And I'm sure I'm the most hated man in this town. But the old church rolls on. The church rolls on. I like that Negro spiritual. Let the church roll on. Let the church roll on. Remember that stanza where it says, If the deacon on the board, and the, and the refrain, If the deacon on the board, it's sort of like the choir was a while ago that couldn't get together. The folks who are singing the fastest are the ones that have television sets and want to get home early tonight. <laughs> and uh, the other people don't want the folks that have television sets to get home and watch the program, so they're trying to drag it out as long as they can. So actually, it's the Yankees that were ahead. The rebels were in a southern accent were coming along uh, a little while later. But uh, what are you doing over there, brother? You're supposed to be over here.
And then the, they, they set the church roll on. And then and the fellow said, if the deacon on the board, 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 then he goes on and says, the deacon on the board ain't doing right. And the bass singer sings, take a deacon off the board and put the board on him. And, uh, but let the church roll on. I blessed be God, this old church here, brothers, been attacked, but the old church rolls on. Newspapers write articles against us, but the old church just rolls on. People criticize us, but the old church just rolls on. One man said, I drive to work down Sibley Street, but I don't never, never drive all the way down Sibley. When I get to, Fay- to Oakley here, I turn right and go to Fayette and drive down Fayette till I get down to Seoul, turn left, and, uh, and on Seoul, come back to Sibley and down Sibley. I said, why? He said, I hate the looks of your church. I said, glory to God. But I said, don't forget when you drive down Seoul, think about us too, because we spend our job soul winning all the time. Hope that haunts you too. But the church rolls on. People spit at us, but the church rolls on. Politicians make fun of us, but the church rolls on. Enemies fight us, but the church rolls on. The Ministerial Association passed a resolution one time against us, but the church rolls on. You say, what's wrong with the Ministerial Association? I don't have enough time to tell you tonight. And if we got out by midnight, I wouldn't have enough time to tell you. I'm simply saying a man does not believe every word in this book is God's word, does not believe that Jesus Christ is the virgin-born Son of God, has no right in this world to stand in the pulpit under the guise of being a Christian. None at all. None at all. He's no more Christian than a bartender's a Christian. No more Christian than a pimp's a Christian. No more Christian than a prostitute's a Christian. I'm saying, listen, but this church, this church can never be defeated by the enemy from without. The only thing that ever destroy any church is, is if from within we lose the blessing of God upon our lives. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Now, may I say this? I never enjoy the despising. I'm not glad folks hate us. Every once in a while somebody says to me, I wish I were like you and didn't care what folks think. I do care what folks think. Time and time again, all of us who preach hard, we go to our rooms and we weep because we don't, we don't sometimes want to do it because we want folks to like us like you want folks to like you. I was in Pennsylvania recently, and boy, I hit a snag, and I, I, I never preached so hard in my life. I, I, I used satire. I raked every preacher there across the coals and then took the deacons and pulled them right behind the preacher and took the deacons back across the coals again and then got the deacons burning up and pulled, pulled the de- preachers across the deacons. And, uh, and oh my, and I went to my room that night and I cried and I cried and I cried. Why? I don't want folks to hate me, but brother, I 10,000 times rather folks hate me than believe that I trimmed my message and hadn't pleased God with what I preached. I'm simply saying, uh, Nehemiah said, I've got to build that wall. I've got to do it. And they laughed at him and that didn't stop him and they despised him and that didn't stop him. And then they tried something else. They had, maybe they had about four rows of bricks now and, uh, Still, the wall is going up. And they got together and said, let's, let's mock them. Let's mock them. And I'm sure that maybe they'd stand up and sing whatever they sang there. Maybe Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. And they'd stand down at the bottom and they'd say, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. And I'm sure somebody would say, Amen, praise the Lord. And the mockers, Amen, praise the Lord. Let them mock, brother. I say with Paul, just rejoice they're praising the Lord. They don't mean it, but rejoice that the Lord's being praised. No, mockery won't do it. Mockery won't. They said, what do these feeble Jews? They said a fox could break it down. They said the work is not stable. They say about this church, they say that this University of Chicago professor, God bless his unconverted heart, <coughs> University of Chicago professor, <coughs> said these yellow, these yellow bus churches will not last. Thank God he wasn't talking about us. We have dirty blue buses is what we have. <coughs> Brother, blue bus churches will always endure. And, uh, but these yellow bus churches, and, uh, and said, it won't last. Hey, fella, hang around a while and just see what goes on. Just hang around. There you do. There you do. And all the time he says we won't last, their churches don't even have service on Sunday night. Listen, they couldn't even bear the church he goes to tonight because they couldn't have enough men there to be Paul bearers. Greatest Christians I know go to soul winning churches like this. The yellow bus churches and the pink bus churches and the chartreuse bus churches and the blue bus churches, all the rest of them have more stability and a greater future than all these 
social-minded, liberal-minded, Bible-rejecting infidels that criticize soul-winning churches in our day. I mean, the church is going to roll on. The mockery won't take, won't do it, won't do it. But the Tribune right. <clears throat> Listen, the, our, our folks here have forgotten more Bible than those people know. You learn more Bible to the soul-winning church off the hors d'oeuvres than you do off the entree of a so-called deeper life church. You stumble into more Bible. A fellow said, not long ago, I, I was down in Tampa, Florida. <clears throat> a fellow said to me, he said, I, I baptized several hundred, 460 some odd people last year. He said, and it's your fault. I said, why? He said, one day, he said, I don't recall this story. He told me this. He said, you were in Tampa preaching, and uh, I met you <clears throat> after the service. And, and, and I, you, you asked where I pastored, and I told you out in the, in the country. And you asked me how many folks were baptized last year, and I said, Fifteen. And you said, now I don't recall saying this, and I know that I'm not the kind of fellow that would say a statement like this. And it hurts me when you doubt me like that. But he, he said, I said, Fifteen all you baptized? He said, I, he, said, I, he said, yes. And he said, I said, good night. We have more folks get lost in the dressing room and fall in than that. Now, I'm sure I wouldn't say that. And, and you're doubting me, and it crushes me, and I feel so lonesome right now. But uh, he said, boy, I went home got thinking about that. More, he said, more folks fall in Howell's Baptist than we get baptized in ours. He said, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't, I couldn't think about anything but that. And he said, I said, bless God, that's not going to be true. And he looked at me, and he said, did you have 460 fall in last year? I said, no, bless God, we didn't. We didn't, and I thank God for you. Listen to me. The hope for this nation lies in those yellow bus churches. Only hope for this nation. And uh, I know what they say. Well, uh, this, I wish we... Uh, uh, one fellow said, a liberal preacher, said, You know what? So this town would be a lot better if you folks weren't even here. I said, Soon we won't be. And I said, you wait till that forked tailed beast gets after you, brother. I'm going to be up at the marriage of the Lamb looking down and saying, hey, you'll get it. Sick it, sick it, sick it, sick it. You say you don't have any love. I have love for Jesus in this book. That's the kind of love I have. God, give us love for Jesus and the truth and right and decency and principles and morals in the Bible. The Amai said, we're going to build a wall. And uh, they said, okay, we're going to laugh at them. They'll stop. They laughed, but the church rolled on. We'll despise them. And they despised them. Said, They'll stop. They despised them. The church rolled on. They said, we'll mock them. They mocked, but the church rolled on. And the wall kept going up. It's only fair to say this, that they didn't stop and fight those people either. No, they had, they had, a, they had their weapon in one hand and their trowel in the other. And all they did was defensive. The only thing they did was defend, listen to this now, they defended their right to build the wall. And all I'm fighting for tonight is our right to, to carry out the commission that God has given us. That's all I'm fighting for. So <clears throat> they, uh, they said, okay, that hasn't worked. We'll try a conspiracy. You know what that is? And this is what happens. All of the enemies got together and formed a united effort to stop them from building that wall. But all of them together couldn't stop, and the wall kept on going up. You know what I was thinking about today? The Ministerial Association, plus the Chicago Tribune, plus the radio, plus the Associated Press, plus the United Nations, plus the National Council of the Churches, plus the University of Chicago, and plus that guy over there, and plus the liberals, and plus the American Baptists, plus the ERA crowd, plus the communists, plus the socialists, plus the ADS, plus the SDS, plus Jane Fonda, plus McGovern, plus uh, the newspapers, plus uh, the um, Madeline Murray O'Hare, plus the HEW. Can't stop the First Baptist Church of Hammond, Indiana if we just keep on going for God. Fine! If we keep marching and attacking... The gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Oh, that's a wonderful promise. That's a wonderful promise. And so they kept on and they built the wall, and the wall got about up to here. And these folks got worried. First they laughed. Ha, 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 ha! 
<laughs> Look at that. And that didn't work. And so then they decided to get mad and say, Oh, we hate you. We hate you. You won't be able to build that wall. And that didn't work. And so they decided mockery. Yeah, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, save wretch like me. That's the same kind of dirty stuff that the fellow used in the article in the Tribune when he used adjectives. He said every other word was a threat. Do you know that we could take him to court over that and sue him? We won't, but we could. Every other word was not a threat. That's like saying, good, we'll get you. Morning, we'll beat you up. Uh... Children, we're going to do what England does. <laughs> and that didn't work. They tried laughing. They tried despising. They tried mockery. They tried conspiracy. Now then, here's, here's the thing that happened that almost did it. Self-pity crept in among God's people. Self-pity. And God's people got to saying, well, we sold our houses, and we mortgaged our houses, some of us, and we spent the money, and look at there, all these enemies down here. Sure, it gets discouraging. Good night when I stop and list my enemies. <laughs> Little kids come to me still and say so often, Brother Hiles, I want you to know I like you in spite of the fact everybody else hates you. Now, that's not really what I had in mind when I said I need your encouragement. But I'm saying this. I'm saying if I stop. If I look down and see my enemies, I'll get pessimistic. But if I look up and see my captain, I get optimistic. Look down, you see communism and war. You look up and you see a God who said, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. You look down and you see the, the new morality and you see the permissive society. You look up and you see him who's invisible who said he would supply every need according to his riches and glory. You look down and you see enemies and hissing. You look up, look up, and you see the saints in heaven looking down. And I think Elijah says, Say, go, go on there, Yingling. Go on there, Hiles. Go on there. I know what kind of... I, I had trouble with the same crowd. Except Elijah did a little more than we did. He chopped the heads of the ministerial association off. I mean, he... Uh, uh, he, when, it, when, it, when he, he said, There is a God! It's your fault! It's not our fault! And they said, It's your fault! He said, Let's just see. And they built that uh, altar and put the the animal on the altar, and they prayed down, and they said, Oh, Baal, hear us and send fire on the altar. And Elijah said, Call a little louder. He's probably asleep. He sleeps late. Maybe the alarm clock didn't go off. This is all in the Hebrew. You'll not find this in the English. Maybe the alarm clock. And they said, Oh, Baal, hear us, hear us, hear us. And Elijah said, Call it. Wait, wait a while. Just wait a while. He's probably on a hunting trip. He'll come back after a while. And, uh, and finally cut themselves and beat their breast. And finally Elijah stepped up and said, he said, Thou the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, show these men thou art God. And fire came and consumed the sacrifice. And that God's still alive in 1975. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. He said, We're more than conquerors, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. But after it's all over, Elijah said, Now I'm going to attend a ministerial association for my first time. So he goes down, and he takes his sword with him. And he bends all the heads over and chops all the heads off. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> uh, but uh, now you say, Brother Hodge, you think he should have done that? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure he should have done it or not. But since he did it, I'd like to have been there and seen it. <laughs> Brother Vineyard says, he said, I don't, I don't believe in cursing, but, he, but when I get mad, if you'll write a curse word down, I'll sign it. <laughs> and uh, old Dr. Bob Jones used to say, I knew a fellow cursed all the time. Said he shouldn't have done it, but said never cussed anybody that didn't need a cussing. <laughs> and forgive me, but the devil needs a cussing tonight. Amen. And the devil needs somebody to stand up and claim the promise of God. And uh, God says, the, 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 Now, I, what I'm trying to say is this don't p pity yourself. There's nothing worse than self pity. Oh, Brother House, what are we going to do? <laughs> I'm going to get raptured, what I'm going to do. I, oh, Brother House, are the communists going to take over? Well, uh, there's not anything they can do to me to really hurt me. Right. If they kill me, I, 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 I've got that all cared for. I mean, I've already got an apartment rented and prepared, all waiting for me right now, and it's already furnished everything, paid up rent. So I, that can't hurt. You say, well, the house, what if they persecute you? Paul said, I rejoice in my tribulation and persecution. Brother, then you're, I don't think I would... 
be pleased tonight if they came and persecuted me. But if they did tie my feet and hands together and set fire to my body and maybe make me walk on live coals or something, I don't think I'd enjoy it. But I sure do think I'd say, Jesus, this wasn't near what was near wasn't near what you did for me. And I think I'd be honored. Oh, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, over in Acts chapter 5, that says they departed after they were beaten. They departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And there's a passage over in the 11th of Hebrews that says about those that were martyred so they were killed because the world was not worthy of them. And so they say, we'll stop you building that wall. And they kept on building the wall. They laughed at them. And they kept on building the wall. And they, they, uh, they got mad at them. And they despised them. They kept on building the wall. And they mocked them. They kept on building the wall. They conspired against them. But they kept on building the wall. That, you know, I laughed about that conspiracy. Isn't that something? They said, one of the fellows said, that, that Boatman was, was guilty of conspiracy because he wrote the handbook that said you ought to spank children. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. God Almighty wrote the handbook that said you ought to spank children. Uh, so, uh, uh, Lord, you're guilty of conspiracy. And by the way, we laugh at that, but it's God they were after, as I preached last Sunday night, you see. But thanks be to God, the promise is still there. Don't have any self-pity. Let me say this. You young folks that are a little different, and they, and they look at your long skirts and they laugh. Wave them at them. <laughs> you boys that have decent haircuts and they laugh at you, and say, hey, look at those 1950 boys. Do like this. Brother, if anybody in the world ought to be proud of what he belongs to, it ought to be the blood wars children of God. Good night. Rejoice to be a child of God. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Get up off your sleeve and rejoice that you're saved. Thank God that you rejoice and be proud to be called a Christian, proud to be called a fundamentalist or a Hiles Anderson College student or a First Baptist Church member. Rejoice in it and thank God for it. By the way, don't think for a second everybody's against us either. There's some folks besides folks in this room tonight who are for us. I don't have any idea who they are, but they're bound to be some. <coughs> I was in a doctor's office having my eyes checked. And uh, the man, I think he's a Jew. He's a good man. But he said, he said uh, how's your college coming? And I said, fine. And he said, how's your high school? I said, fine. He said, uh, isn't yours the one that makes the boys get their hair cut? I said, ours is the one. And then I got ready for it. And he said, put her there. He said, I rejoice in it. He said, that's what I think you ought to do. There are a lot of people like that. <clears throat> There's a judge in this area. <laughs> I think it was Judge Ruskowski who, who was uh, nominated... Uh, to be mayor for the Democratic Party, uh, the candidate. I, but it was a, it was a city, city judge, and uh, it had a, a, a fellow there that was a delinquent, a juvenile delinquent, a boy there. And the judge said, "You ever spank this boy?" I think it was Ruskowski that said this. And the mother said, "Why no?" He said, "Take him down to Hiles. He will." There are a lot of folks that believe in what we believe in. They don't holler as loud about it as we do, but they, but they believe in it. And there are a lot of people. I got a call the other day from a Jewish school teacher. He's in the public schools. And the Jewish school teacher said, I'd like to apply to teach in your high school. And I said, why? And he said, I'm afraid for my physical well-being in the school where I teach. And he said, I don't know of a high school in this Calumet area that has the rules and discipline that I believe in like Hammond Baptist High School. Now, you know we didn't hire him, but I'm simply telling you that there are people here who are for us, and there are a lot of old-fashioned Americans still left, still left.
People say, how's you going to chase them all off preaching like that? If we keep chasing them off like we have been, we're going to have to have an auditorium to see 25,000 people. I believe there are thousands of people in this town who've heard criticism about us and don't like us, but if they came to this building, they'd learn to like us because they believe what we believe. Self-pity. Don't feel sorry for yourself. They said, we won't let you. We'll stop that war. They laughed at them, ridiculed them, hated them, inspired against them. And then when they saw the wall just about the top, <clears throat> And they saw they couldn't. Now, here's the sneakiest thing they do. When they saw the wall just about the top and saw they could not keep them through anger and opposition and fighting from building that wall, then they sent messengers and said, let's go in together. And old Nehemiah said, we're too busy. We're too busy. Now, that's the great, the great trap into which fundamentalists fall when we get to the place where we have the victory and we know that God has given us the victory. Then we want to become accepted with the same crowd that hated us. I know evangelists who have been fought all the way every step up the ladder till they became nationally famous, and then the crowd that fought them said, Now we'll sponsor you. We'll sponsor you. And that's the trap. They want to swallow us. <clears throat> there was a day when the Methodists were the same type of people we are. Until they got so big, they decided to join up with their enemies. There was a day when the Nazarenes were just like we are. But then they decided in many cases to join up with their enemies. There was a day when the Church of God folks were just like we are. But they decided to join up with their enemies. Somebody said, Brother House, when do you plan to join a ministerial association? When every single minister in the association signs a written statement that he believes this book is verbally inspired by God Almighty and that Jesus Christ is the virgin-born Son of God and the Savior of those that trust Him. Well, that didn't work. And then they tried one other thing. They tried slandering the leader. They wrote letters to the king and said to the king, Did you know that Nehemiah is trying to take over your throne? He's guilty of treason. He's guilty of insurrection. He's going to cause... He, he wants to be the king. Did you know that? They tried dirty. And that's what they're trying to do when they attack Vineyard. And that's what they're trying to do when they attack Hiles. They know, but they, they know this. They know that the work is being done, and they've tried hatred. They've tried laughter. They've tried mocking. They've tried criticism. They've tried fighting. And then they say, okay, we'll, we'll attack the leader. That's why men like Jerry Falwell been under the fire. That's why some of the greatest men of God in America have, have been in the fire for the last year, and brother, the day is going to come. But let me say again, there is not one single weapon the devil has that can destroy this or any other church. If we will stay right with God and stay on our faces and keep attacking the devil and keep standing for that which is true, there, the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Now, what could defeat us? We, are, we could defeat ourselves. We could defeat ourselves. We come to the summertime. <clears throat> this summer, we could defeat ourselves. Look out, college students. You're going home. Look out. That which the devil could not do in fighting and laughing at you here, he can do through your indifference and laziness and lack of zeal when you get home if you don't watch it. Look out, college students. Every, every bit of ground you've, 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 you've taken since you've been here, you can lose in one week at home. You go home and you get up in the morning and you keep, get you get on the bus routes and, and you get busy soul winning in your own church and you be part of your own church and you get busy for God and don't you go home and preach about First Baptist Church Hammond is better than our home church and don't you rub First Baptist Church Hammond in the noses of the people at home. You stand for your pastor and stand beside your pastor and you be an asset and an attribute to your own local church and don't lose the ground you've gained. Look out, Sunday school teachers. Look out, spring program is over now. Look out, 
we can defeat ourselves. Look out, women. It's hot. Don't you be sucked in by this short-wearing, bathing suit-wearing, bikini-wearing society. You dress just like you've been dressing all winter long. You, you can dress in cotton if you want to instead of wool, but, but uh, you be sure it covers the same amount it always covers. Always covered. Look out, bus workers. Look out, men high, uh, having Baptist high school students. What's been wrong for nine months? It's still wrong. It's still wrong. Still wrong. Still wrong. Same old story about the lion, the bear, and the serpent. You recall over the book of Amos, I think it is. Here's a fellow that was running, walking down the street, and all of a sudden the lion came. He saw the lion begin to run for his life, running and huffing and puffing and running, and all of a sudden the bear came the other direction. Oh, good night, there's a lion coming this way, there's a bear from this way, and the fellow looks toward the lion, looks toward the bear. I'm not sure which one I'd want to choose, and he didn't know, so he, he starts running for home. He runs, and he huffs, and he puffs, and he runs for home, and he opens the door, and he gets inside, and locks the door, and he's safe, and the lion, the bear, the lion can't kill him, and the bear can't kill him from the outside, but he's so tired. He leans up against the wall and says, I'm glad I'm finally safe. And a snake bites him on the hand and kills him. That's an Amos. Now that's the way a church is. Never has been a church that got defeated by the devil from the outside. Never has been. Every time God's people ever are defeated, it's because from the inside we don't stay busy for God. Now tonight, may I say, if you've been, been, been indifferent about the work of God, in God's name, get back in the battle again. Get back in the battle. If tonight... If you've been uh, take, considering taking a little ease this summer and sort of uh, resting a while and getting out of the battle, listen, the devil doesn't take any summertime off. He knows no vacations. You stay busy for God. If you become discouraged and you're not, not proud to be called one of God's people and you're not thankful to God for the position you have as a Christian, as a fundamentalist, and if you become a little bit on the inside feeling sorry for yourself and you have self-pity, in God's name, get it out. Rise up, O people of God. We be children of God and heirs of God and join heirs with Jesus Christ. For we are more than conquerors. More than conquerors. Unconquerable through him that loved us. For he said, Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Brother, we're on the winning side. Amen. I think I'll tell a little story I've told so often and then I'm through. Little boy <clears throat> was sitting in the living room, reading the book. He's right in the middle of the book. His mother called and said, Hey, Johnny, come dry the dishes for me. Johnny said, Mama, I'm reading the book right now. Can I get through with that first? I said, Come dry the dishes for me. Johnny said, Mama, I'm in the middle of the book, and the villain has got the hero down, and he's about to kill him, and I can't leave the hero about to die here in the middle of the book. She said, I said, Get in here and dry the dishes. Mama, let me finish. Let me wait till the hero gets out of trouble. And... Uh, she said, get in here. And Johnny said, okay, Mama. He turns over to the last page of the book. On the last page, he finds out the hero wins. And he walks in and runs in the, in the kitchen, and he's hollering and holding that book up high. Yeah, yeah, he says. Yeah, yeah, old villain. You're having it pretty good in the middle of the book. But you wait you get the last chapter. You're in for the surprise of your life when you get the last chapter. You have the, yeah, old devil. Come on out of hell, you dirty lying thief, you crook, you you deceiver of the elect, you that sends folks to hell, you that started this hellhole down here on State Street, this massage parlor and the adult bookstore. Hey, you that wants to steal our kids. Hey, you that wants to ruin these young people. Come on out of hell. I, be, I read the last chapter. The last chapter tells about when Jesus comes with trumpet sound and the dead shall be raised. I read the last chapter. I read the chapter that says King Jesus shall rule from Mount Zion as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I read the last chapter. I read the chapter that says, I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for husband. Hey, old devil, have your fun in your red white district. Have your fun in your X-rated movies. Have your fun in your playboy philosophy. Hey, old devil, live it up. Because I've read the last chapter, and you're in for the shock of your life when you get to the book of Revelation, I'll tell you for sure. Blessed be God, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. The gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I pray you'd give us new courage and new faith. I pray you'd help us to stay close to thee who said, The gates of hell cannot prevail against the church that attacks for Jesus. 
I pray the night you'd bless those that drifted away and gotten out of the battle. Bless that one who's gone into sin. Bless that one who quit his Sunday school class. Bless that one that quit his bus route. Bless that one that's going to go home and loaf all summer. Bless that one that's quit soul winning. Bless the one that's quit saying on the job for God. Bless the one that's about to, about to ease up. Bless the one that's tempted to rest all summer. I pray you'd bless those that have self-pity and those that aren't proud to name the name of Christ. I pray you'd help us to stay with our swords in one hand and our trowel in the other hand, building the wall and defending our right to keep building that wall. Bless us tonight in the closing moments of this service. When <clears throat> our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I wonder how many would say, Brother Hiles, I'm afraid the devil's sort of gotten the victory in my life some, in some ways. I'm afraid the laughter's gotten to me. I'm afraid the hatred's gotten to me. I'm afraid self-pity has gotten to me. I'm afraid loafing's gotten to me. I'm afraid the temptation to compromise has gotten to me. Brother Hiles, in my part of the wall is not being built tonight like it once was. Pray for me. Would you lift your hand, please, all over the building, all over the building, all over the building. God bless you, our Heavenly Father. I pray tonight you'd help us to get back on the wall. We need all the people. We need all the people to stay on the wall and keep working. I pray you'd bring us all back to the wall with swords and trowels and staying busy for God. Bless these dear ones. Now, when we're saying, you know what you ought to do, if you feel you ought to do it, you just do what God says. You can put your hands down. I wonder how many would say, Brother Hiles, I'm not even a Christian. Boy, I'd like to have what you folks have. I'd like to have whatever it is. I'd like to have it. Thank you for listening. And if you like this, please subscribe and consider liking my Facebook page and joining my group, Jesus Answers Prayer. May God bless your day.